Hi everybody, it's Daphne and you're very welcome back to spend some time with me today. I hope everybody's well and enjoying the Easter break if you're having an Easter break. Um, my children are still on holiday, they'll go back to school this coming Monday. So um, during the two weeks that they've had, well almost two weeks, that they've had for holiday it's been a little bit trickier for me to film because they're here during the day so I have to pick my times very carefully. Anyway today I thought I would talk about hand care, hand and nail care because I think very often our hands are ne not neglected but we forget that our hands need as much care almost as our face and our necks and our décolleté. I know for a long long time I believed that the only thing I really needed to do to take care of my hands was to put on some hand cream. And that now we know that you can do so much more to care for your hands and to keep them youthful looking. And it is important to remember that our hands can age us. And I always felt that my hands looked an awful lot older than I am. <laughs> they looked much, much older. And I blame that on the fact that, uh, well, for lots of different things, but um, when I, well, many years ago, I was a teacher and we used chalk. There were no whiteboards, so we used chalk. And the chalk got into, you know, any little lines or crevices or, you know, into your cuticles. And I felt they really, it really changed the skin on my hands and made it very dry. So I've always struggled with very, very dry skin on my hands, particularly in the winter when they would crack. The tips of my fingers would crack and my knuckles would crack. So I have struggled to find products that would really um, help to improve the condition of my hands. And I'm really working on trying to make them look more youthful because I've noticed that they are beginning to get a lot more crepey and drier than they used to be. Dry possibly in the dehydrated sense. Um, so I just thought I would talk about that today. Um, I have a couple of little things noted down here. So if you see, and I have some products here as well. So if you see me looking to the side, you'll know why. Um, I was reading a book called Toss the Gloss, which is written by Andrea Q. Robinson, and I've heard lots of people talk about this. But there's a, she has a chapter in this that deals with the neck, décolleté and the hands. And so I was looking through it to see what her tips were, and they are very, very good tips that she has given. But I didn't know, and she says it in, in her book, that models, generally models who are hand models, they're not necessarily models in their teens and in their 20s. They're often ladies in their 30s and 40s. And she makes the point that, well, if that's the case, then that's proof that we can actually keep our hands youthful looking. Um, she, was, she also said that when models are modelling, when, when their hands are being used in photographs, models are told to have their hands above their heart for a, a minute. And when you think about it, it makes so much sense because all the, you know, the blood will drain somewhat and they will look smoother and less veiny. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, to talk basically about hand care, I know everybody knows to put hand cream on, but what I started doing recently is using a hand scrub. And I did mention this before. This was a gift, actually. It's the L'Occitane. It's called the One Minute Hand Scrub. And that's it. That's it there. It came in a set with the hand cream and it's quite oily so if I can show you I still have the t it's like a tin foil cover Let's see if I can because it is quite liquidy and um, there it is there and you can see I'm sure you can see it's quite grainy as well but that is fabulous for it literally is a one minute hand scrub you scoop some out it comes with a little spatula so you can mix it around because this, you know the, the sugar does settle and the oil comes to the top. So it's quite oily. I keep it in the box so that it doesn't stain anything. But you scoop out a little is all it takes and you rub it in to your hands. You don't even have to wet your hands. You just rub it in and concentrate it, you know, obviously here and on your knuckles. Um, my knuckles would be very dry and I think that they've got quite gnarly looking. Um, but you rub it in for about a minute and then you rinse under a warm tap and I'm not joking you they feel so soft even without applying the hand cream which came with it which was the the L'Occitan Shea Butter everybody knows this one it's there I think one of these cells every 12 seconds or something um but it is a very good hand cream and it's it's there's a Shea Butter base it's got 20 20 percent 
shea butter. Yes, 20% shea butter. But I was looking at the ingredients and I'm thinking, you know, when, even as I was using the scrub, I was thinking, there's definitely sugar and there's definitely oil. So I had a little look at the ingredients and sugar is the main ingredient. And a few different combinations of oils, like there's sweet almond oil, there's vitamin E, there's, a, um, there's another, can I see it? Because it's, it's so tiny. Um, let me see, I have to catch the light as well. Um, there's apricot kernel oil, so there's quite a few different oils in it. So I said, you know what, there must be a way to recreate a similar hand scrub. So I looked it up on YouTube and there's lots of different recipes, but I made my own basically. And I had a little mason jar. So this is my version of the L'Occitane. It's not exactly the same, obviously, because I don't know their secret ingredients or proportions. But into this I have put, I put, I'd say, a little over half the container of sugar, just regular kitchen sugar. You could probably, I think the grainier it is, you know, um, regular granulated sugar is quite, it's harsher than, say, caster sugar. Um, so it might, it'll be more exfoliating. So I put just over half of the glass. This is a small one. I mean, that's, there's the palm of my hand. So it's a small enough mason jar. Is it a mason jar? No, it's not. I can't remember the name, but you know that they have, there's a little seal on it. It's like a mason jar. And um, into that, I added olive oil. Now I was just guessing the proportions. So I put enough olive oil and I was mixing it with a teaspoon until I felt it was oily enough because the L'Occitan one is quite oily. Um, so I, until I felt this was oily enough. So when it's, when you leave it to sit, you can see it's quite, it's sealed. It's still liquidy. I don't know if you'll be able to see it as well, but you can see where the oil has, you can, you can see it there. The oil has separated from the sugar. So when I go to use it, I just mix it with, mix it with a spoon. And also into that I put, I'm just going to close it because it will spill. There we go. And um, it's quite sticky. Also into that I put some lemon juice because lemon juice is um, a skin lightener and I do have a sunspot on my hand that I'm very, I have freckles. I'm naturally kind of a freckly person on my arms and that. Um, but that's a sunspot or sun damage or an age spot. I don't like to call it an age spot. It's a sunspot. Um, so I've been trying for a while to try and lessen the appearance of this. So that's why I put lemon juice into that as well. Now, I did try another little treatment that I saw on YouTube and I can't remember who suggested it, but it was a mixture of, and again, you make it up to your, your own proportions, um, some bread soda, bicarbonate of soda, and you mix it with a little bit of milk and you can have it quite like a, a paste or you can have it a little bit more, um, a little bit more runny. Um, I'd, it, I'd say to get have it as a paste, you'd want to put literally drops of milk in, and that is an exfoliant as well. And I did try that, and I it did. The video I watched was to make the hands look paler and more, um, you know, the complexion to be more uniform. Now I'd say you'd have to do it a little bit more often because there's lactic acid in milk, which will exfoliate as well, and there's a whitening agent in bicarbonate of soda. So. To, the two together, I'd say, would be a very um, good combination, but it would be slightly more drying. The sugar and the oil is a very good combination because the sugar exfoliates and the oil moisturises. Now, you could also put honey into um, a scrub like that because honey is a natural humectant, which means that it will draw moisture in. The only thing is it will be extra sticky, so <laughs> it depends on if you can if you can manage to you know, bear the, the stickiness of that I found when I, I find sometimes when I use it, I get it up my arms and I'm like, oh, I'm sticky everywhere. But, <laughs> um, what I actually did today as a little experiment, I think it was, yes, it was on this hand with the sunspot. I used my own, um, hand scrub and on this hand I used the L'Occitane. And I'm being very honest, I couldn't really tell the difference especially in, you know, when you've rinsed both off, both hands feel the same. Now, I'm not sure, I'll have to check it out, how much the L'Occitane hand scrub is to buy, but I reckon it won't be less than 20 euro because that size of hand cream is about 22, 22 euro could be even more. It does come in a smaller size as well, one that you can pop into your handbag, but you can get the same results from a homemade 
I have it labelled and all, <laughs> lemon hand scrub. Um, so you'll get the same results from that. And actually, this would make a lovely body scrub. Um, just put it, you know, make a larger amount and put it into a similar jar, one that you can seal, maybe one with a screw top lid, um, or even into a plastic container because then you could take it into the shower. And it, I would imagine, I mean, if it makes my hands really soft, I can imagine that it's going to leave the rest of the skin on my body very soft as well. And you do it, you could do it in the shower and then just wash it all away. Just be careful to make sure that you've washed any um, oily residue so that the shower, the shower tray isn't slippy. You don't want to slip. Um, so that's that's the hand scrub and I highly recommend that because since I've been using it I have seen um, a significant difference in the texture of my skin and in the moisture level of my, of my skin, absolutely. Cuticles can be very difficult to, to, to care for. Um, they say that you, you know, I, I suppose we see people soaking their fingers in little bowls of warm water with oil, or you can actually buy those little plastic um, containers that have the, the little holes for your fingers so you can actually put your fingers down into, the, you'll get them in the likes of um, Superdrug. They'd, I've seen them there um, and they wouldn't be expensive. Um, so that you soak your, your fingers and your cuticles to soften them and then you would push them back with maybe an orange stick or I have a little metal um, instrument. It looks like something you'd see at the dentist, doesn't it? But um, yeah, that's what I use. And very, very gently, when your cuticles are warm and soft, you push them back very gently. And the little orange sticks will do the same thing. Um, so you push them back and you should also use um, a cuticle cream or an oil. Now I've tried different ones. I actually have the Burt's Bees. Um, it's the Lemon Butter Cuticle Cream. That's it there. And as you can see, it's well used. Um, I don't, I don't know if I really like it, and it does smell quite lemony. I don't know if I really, really like it. It's fine. I mean, it's it's handy for if you're sitting up in bed at night, and I often do it when I'm reading or from watching YouTube videos. And I'll just massage. I'll show you. I'll just massage a little in. Just scoop a little. You don't need very much. That would do a couple of cuticles so you just massage it in I, I rub a little in like that and then I go back with my thumb and really massage it in around the sides of my nails and into the bed of my nail and it does leave a kind of an oily residue but it wouldn't be like using and if you're sitting up in bed and you're using an actual oil because you can buy those as well and they're like they come in almost like um almost like a, a bottle of polish I've seen them um and you just they apply with a little brush as well it's they're very handy um and they would rub in but it's just if you're sitting in bed at night and you have a little bottle of oil, it might be easier to spill. Whereas the little tin is safer. I'm, I like it, but you know what? I think I'm an oil person, and I'll, I'll explain that in, 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 in a later video where I'm going to talk about body lotions and oils and things. Um, I also have this. This is um, new enough to me. My daughter left it behind when she was going off to the States and she said, you can use that. And I never opened it. I've never, I don't even know. I've never heard of the company. I think she got it in a gift set and it's by Heathcote and Ivory and it's cuticle cream and there's 38 mils in it. So that's it there. And it's in a, it, it might look bigger. It's a smallish little um, tub, but it's a cream as a, it's not an oily base. So um, again, a small little bit goes a very long way and you just rub it in and in and around the, the sides of your nails and the bed of your nails. But using something like this, regardless of whether you like the texture of the Burt's Bees or you prefer an oil or you prefer a cream, using something like this is very important to keep your cuticles healthy and moisturised and that way they won't get r raggy. Now, I know when you go to have your nails done, to have a professional manicure, they will trim your cuticles. And I've heard, I have actually heard horror stories about people having their cuticles trimmed and they end up getting infections. Um, and I'm looking here for something that I thought I had taken out. I actually have a cuticle trimmer. Yes, here it is. Um, because, typical of me, I have to, if I see something, I have to have it. If I see, oh, I can use that, I can use that. So... That's it there. Again, it looks like a, an instrument of torture. <laughs> and what you do is, it used to have a little plastic cover that would keep it from opening. So there's a little piece of, a little metal bar here. So you swing it around like that. 
and until it clicks into place and that's what gives it the spring. So when you're trimming your cuticles you find the flat end like that and you very gently trim and I mean it's it is tricky it's it's easier to do it if you're right handed it's easy to do on your left hand if you're left handed obviously it's easier to do on your right hand but it, that's it it has a little spring on it so you just just literally clip them but you'd have to do it very carefully and I wouldn't you know the way sometimes cuticles can grow slightly up the side you'll feel them on the side of your nail it, they're good for removing that kind of thing but if you're not sure if you're not you know if you're uncertain don't do it just use the the orange stick soak them in oil or soak them in warm water and do it that way it's a, or get them done professionally but you can buy those in boots and in super drug so they're my two implements of torture um so that's for kind of cuticle care um Shaping your nails obviously is a good emery board or you can use the glass filing filing boards as well, which can be expensive to buy now. We used to buy, be able to buy them very inexpensively in a shop called Deals and they lasted and lasted and lasted and I haven't seen them there for a while. So at the moment I've been using this one, which I bought in Primark pennies and they usually come in a set. So it has five different or is it six? There's six different um, ways to use it. So um, when I'm doing my nails, um, I will even out the, the surface of my nail. It tells you what each thing is to do. Because each, there's a different texture on each part. So this one is to even out ridges. So you start with that's number one. Number two is to smooth out the nail surface. Then you go to number three, which is on the other side, and you buff the nail surface. And then this one is number four, and that shines the nail surface, and it actually does. So if you didn't want to put a polish on, if you wanted to have your, just your natural nails, you could just use this. Then you go to shaping the actual nail itself. Um, it tells you number five is to shape the nail and then number six is the white side and that helps to neaten the nail edges. So if you've got any any little sharp pieces or parts that need to be filed very, very finely, that's a great one. And these are very inexpensive. I think there's three in the pack for like two or three euro. So I've daughters that we're always borrowing. <laughs> I'll go to use mine and it's gone. <laughs> um, I suppose the other thing that I personally would forget to do a lot when I'm doing housework is to use to wear gloves. I will you I will wear gloves when I'm cleaning the bathroom, you know, where I'm using products that might be although I try to use products that are not too too uh, chemically based. I try and use natural products like the method. But um you know, at times in a bathroom you have to use bleach. Um so I would wear uh, some kind of gloves when I'm when I'm cleaning the bathroom. But if I'm just washing something very quickly in the sink, the dishes, you know, not I wouldn't wash a whole sink of dishes. But if I'm washing a pot or whatever, I would just, I'm not bother putting on a pair of gloves, and I should because I'm drying my hands out. And a great treatment actually is to put if you're going to be wearing rubber gloves and washing your washing dishes and your hands are in and out of warm water, would be to put on a good layer of hand cream and put your hands into the um, into the gloves, and you'll get with the heat of the water you the moisture would be pushed into your skin so that's a good that's a good tip and um, another very good tip is to keep lotion everywhere you would you wouldn't even think i suppose i mean I suppose all of us would have lotion hand lotion by the bed and you might have hand lotion by the sink maybe in the bathroom or whatever but to have one in your bag one in your car one by the kitchen sink one by the bathroom sink lots of places like that, that so that you're reminded all the time to keep the moisture levels up and this is a reminder for me because I don't always do it. <laughs> I always have um, um, a hand cream in my bag. I always have one by the bed and I do use it at night. There's one by my kitchen sink, but I don't think to use it. And I need to think, use your hand cream more often. Um, last thing at night, obviously, I presume most people do put hand lotion on. But if you, like I have, as I say, struggled with very, very dry skin and I have used numerous different hand creams to try and um, alleviate that condition and the ones that really worked for me were and um, when I'm really in trouble is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm AP Plus and it's not specifically a hand cream you could use it really anywhere you've got dry skin but that really was a lifesaver for me and I keep it by my bed Um I won't use it so much now because my hands aren't too bad Um I probably would opt to use the um, L'Occitane, but the Lipicar, the 
Liver Car Balm, the La Roche Posay, that in conjunction with the Liz Earl Hand Serum, which I'm out of at the moment, and I just haven't managed to buy it because it is 27 euro and there's been other things I've needed to buy, but it is on my list and I, it is a real go-to. I love it. Um, and I really think it has helped to sort of make my hands look more youthful. But to put that on at night, and another tip would be, and I suppose we've all, we all know this as well, I'm probably preaching to the converted, there's a hair stuck on that, um, would be to put a really good thick layer of this on and then put a pair of cotton gloves on, leave them on overnight, and in the morning your hands will be really soft. Um, and you pick up those cotton gloves in any pharmacy or in super drug or boots. They're not expensive. Um, I suppose the biggest tip for everybody in relation to hand care is when you're putting your sunscreen on your face in the morning, remember to put some on your hands because when we're driving, particularly when you're driving and your hands are up on the wheel, the skin is very much exposed to the rays of the sun and I am convinced that that's where this came from. Even though in Ireland we drive on, we sit on the right side of the, the driver's seat on the right side of, this car, of the car. And um, so my left hand is on the inner side of the car, if you know what I mean. It's not, it's not as close to the two window, the, the passenger, not the passenger, the driver's window as my right hand would be. But obviously it's up on the wheel, so Ray's coming in the, the windscreen. Um, and I'm convinced that that's what that is from. Um, so possibly if I had been applying my sunscreen, that wouldn't have happened. Anyway. Um, so I do try to think now in the mornings when I'm putting on my facial sunscreen to rub a bit on the back of my hands as well. And I really should do that several times during the day because when you think about it, your hands are exposed all the time. Um, let me see. Yes, actually in that book, she talks about, I'll just go back to the chapter, she talks about nail polish choices and um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with what she says, but she spoke, just to backtrack a little, she was talking about um, hand creams and where did she say it? Yes, she was talking about the fact that they are generally in their 30s and 40s, which this is hand, mo hand models, which illustrates how good hand care can keep your hands youthful forever. One hand model I know swears by almond oil and she mentions particularly the make, which is Walida Almond Smoothing Facial Oil, which has high amounts of vitamin E and A. She's tested hundreds of creams and believes that this inexpensive emollient penetrates the skin better than any hand cream. So that's a very interesting point because vitamin E oil you can buy um, in little bottles um, and it is, I mean, vitamin E oil is very good for healing the skin and moisturising the skin. And I think actually, if I'm not mistaken, in that tiny writing, there's probably some vitamin E oil in there. I think I did say that. So it is something I'm going to add into this. And I'll add in some sweet almond oil because I use sweet almond oil all the time for cleansing. Um, and I often use it as a moisturiser, um, a body moisturiser. Now, she speaks about, when I say she, Andrea Robinson. She was talking about choosing nail polish colours because if, you've to, if you're looking after your hands you may want to have your natural nails and if they're in really beautiful condition I think this that is so pretty to see nails in good condition a lovely shape and well you know well cared for and just in a natural nail that's so 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 pretty but if you decide that you really want to wear, have a, um, a colour on your on your nails I don't necessarily agree with her her ideas on this she says fairer skin um, allows you to wear a bevy of colours from light to medium. For barely there shades, choose a clean nude colour which counters any redness in your skin. Stick with pink or purple undertones for skins that skin tones that are bluish white and yellow undertones for skin tones that are creamier. Unless your hands are smooth and vein free, avoid anything bright or flashy which make your hands makes your hands look old. And she suggests um essay essay ballet slippers, which I think yes, I have that actually. That's Essie Ballet slippers there. Um, you can see it there, which is a lovely colour. But it's very watery, I think. So it takes a lot of coats to get an opaque finish. She also suggests L'Oreal Colour Riche Nail Polish in How Romantic. Now, I don't have that one, but I do have. It's called Nude Demoiselle. Make sure I have this the right way up. 
nude demoiselle is that right it's number 411 anyway and actually that's what I'm wearing at the moment except for this finger here that I wanted to make um, as a statement nail which I think is very pretty particularly in the summer and it's a L'Oreal colour as well and it is in the colour it's called Lore L apostrophe O or it's French and it's 660 so it's very tiny I hope you can read that but that's that one there it's a gold and actually this goes beautifully with I have a navy polish of theirs as well and the two go beautifully but I just thought that that was a nice um accent nail um but this one this color would be similar enough to Essie ballet slippers similar enough this took two coats now it's not perfect it's certain that one or two nails it could be better you see it could be better on that nail it's not quite perfect so it probably needs a third coat but on the other nails it's not bad um, and I like the brushes on the L'Oreal polishes because they're short it's it's very easy to control the polish on that and to get a good application um, but I wouldn't necessarily agree with her point about not going for brighter flashy colours because I think we can we can wear colours I mean I would wear um, a classic red and this one is uh, Nails Inc. It was free with Glamour magazine and it's called... Is there a name on it? Oh, it is somewhere. Oh, oh, it's called Tate. That's... I mean, I would call that a bright, flashy colour, but it's a classic red. This one I love. It's, again, it's it came free with a magazine and it was... It's called The, the Glossop, but it's a Chiate or Ciate. That's more of an orangey colour. Um, and then, of course, you have your classic nudes. I have, sorry, excuse me, I'm reaching. Um, these are, I love, I love Seattle polishes. These, this one, most of them I have to say I've got free with magazines. This is Amazing Gracie. So it's another whitish nude. It's almost like, where's Essie gone? It's very similar to Essie ballet slippers. And then this is a lovely one. It's a, it's a nude, but it's got a little bit more colour and it's called My Fair Lady. And it's an Essie, or uh, Seattle, the little bow came away and then of course you have this is a chanel i've shown this one before it's chanel mythique it's not a red it's kind of a, a mauve whiny color it's gorgeous um and then this is chanel what's this one called tenderly and it's a kind of a nude as well but it's a sort of a taupey nude I do have lots of bright colours that I wear in the summertime, so I don't necessarily agree with that, that you shouldn't wear certain colours, um, unless you put them with your skin tone and it just doesn't look right, but I think we're all able to make that kind of judgement. Um, she talks about medium skin and darker skin and different polishes. There was something else I was going to say. No, I think that's all I wanted to say about nail care hand and nail care but to you know as i used to think myself that all i could do was to just put on some hand cream there's so many things that we can do and in fact you can buy hand um, masks you can buy them um but i do think that the hand scrubs with the oils and whether in fact I, I did say that what i put into that was olive oil you can put almond oil you could put vitamin e oil you could put a mixture in you could put um jojoba oil which is very similar to it, it it absorbs very easily into our into our skin it's very similar to the lipids in our skin you could put a mixture you could put rosehip oil into that um because it's what's exfoliating is the sugar and then you're putting some moisture back in um so i highly recommend that because i honestly can see a big improvement in my hands since i started to use it there was one other thing i wanted to mention to you and it's got nothing to do with nails at all and this is something i bought the other day I saw a video that Lisa Eldridge made about two weeks ago and she was doing, I can't remember what the look was, I'll see if I can find it, but she, was it a sculpted look? I can't remember, but she mentioned a new Revlon eyeshadow and she did it as a one shadow look and I just, when I saw her do it, it looked, now I know her lighting is amazing and mine is not, it looked beautiful and I had to have it. And it is Revlon Colour Stay. It's in the colour, it's a creme eyeshadow and it's number 710. I think it's caramel. When I was buying it and it was on display, it had the name written, but it doesn't seem to be on. 
no, it doesn't seem to be on this, but I think it's caramel. It's number 710. Anyway, that's that's the number there. But wait till you see this. Look at that. And you can see I've had my paws in it. Um, in fact, that's what I'm wearing today. One shadow. It's gorgeous. You can have a sheer wash or you can intensify it. And you know what's really handy? Look at the top. Watch. It comes with a brush. So you don't have to put your fingers in. If you don't want to put your fingers into it, you can take out a little with your brush, put it on your hand and work with your fingers or work with a brush. It's so nice and creamy. I'll swatch it so you can see. Um, it's so nice and creamy. I'll swatch it beside my sunspot. It's really gorgeous. It's coming out darker there than it actually is. It's got a gorgeous goldy caramelly um, colour and it's not showing up, it's showing up brown. <laughs> Maybe there, there you can see it a little bit better, you can see where it's lighter. It's absolutely beautiful, it's so buttery, it's really lovely. Couldn't wait to use that, um, I couldn't get, wait to get my hands on it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really loving that and I highly recommend it, it's really pretty. Just very quickly, one swipe and you're done. You can smoke it out or you can intensify it or you can mix it with other colours. And there were other colours in the range. There was a darker one that was a kind of a chocolatey colour and then there was a lighter one. Um, but this was the one she used, so that was the one I had to have. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed that and um, we can all focus on our hands in the lead up to summer because that's what I'm in that mode at the moment is to get myself summer ready. Uh, I will be talking about um, lotions, body lotions and body oils in a later video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that and give, if you've got any tips, anything that I should be doing for hand care or it's something that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing, please let me know in the comments down below. I really appreciate you all watching and um, giving me some of your time um, and I love getting to know you and thank you for all the comments and all my new, new subscribers. I really, really, really appreciate it. So I hope you have a lovely evening or a lovely day wherever you are and I will see you very soon in the next video. So bye for now.